Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and today I want to talk about better black and white HDR images. Now, recently Chris from the HDR Insider group on the Facebook page posted a question about how do you process your uh, black and white HDR images. Do you go ahead and do the black and white processing first and then run it through tone mapping or do you tone map it and then do the black and white? So I was talking about black and white in the Facebook group and I told him that there's some relatively many ways that you can get a good black and white photograph. The first that we know of, uh, we may know of, is the black and white adjustment layer that will give you something like this. And then there's the gradient map which will give you something like this. And then there's a better way to do black and white. So I'm going to show you that better way to do black and white. So first let's take a look at the black and white filter. So the black and white, it's not a filter, sorry, the black and white adjustment layer gives you the ability to adjust the lightness and darkness in any color. So what you're seeing here is red. You can adjust how dark or how light the color red is. Same thing with yellow. And you can actually get a really good black and white photograph this way because you're adjusting the luminance in those individual colors on a black and white layer. And this can be pretty powerful. But you know what? There's more. There's a lot more to this than just this. A lot of people praise this black and white filter as being one of the best ways to do a black and white image. But how about this? Let's go to hue saturation. Just open a hue saturation adjustment layer and then open a gradient map. Make sure that this gradient map is set to black and white. Okay, so now what's happening is you've got this gradient map black and white umbrella above anything that's happening below it. So what that allows us to do is actually go into that hue saturation adjustment layer and go into each and individual color here. So we can go into the individual color of red and if we adjust the hue we now get more than just the lightness or luminance of that color. We can adjust the hue of that color. We can adjust the saturation of that color and we can adjust the lightness of that color or the luminance like you saw in the black and white adjustment layer. So now we've got three adjustments for each individual color. So before we had one adjustment for each individual color, now we've got three. We can adjust the hue, saturation, and lightness. And yes, even though we're adjusting color right now, because we have this gradient map umbrella over everything that we're doing, all that's doing is basically giving us a representation of what our black and white image would look like. So as we adjust those individual colors, we can come up with a really crazy looking black and white image that gives us a lot more control over the individual photo than what you're seeing in a regular black and white conversion. So if I increase the hue a little bit, maybe change the hue of that color, and what it's doing there is if I turn this off, I've actually turned all the colors of red into like a greenish color. But because it's a black and white filter above it, all it's seeing is the luminance of those colors underneath and how we're adjusting the luminance of those colors underneath. So I'm actually going to blow out that, that red a little bit more and introduce some more light to the red by adding more saturation to that area. And then I can do the same thing with lightness. I can make that just a little bit darker to bring out some of the detail in that color red. So if we look at that before and after, I mean, that right there alone, we've blown out some of that red in that, in that sunset area back there, but we've also adjusted it to um, give it some, some more depth and some more detail. Now let's go into the color yellow. I don't really think I want to change the hue of the color yellow at all, but let's increase the saturation. So as we increase the saturation of the color yellow, because it's getting more saturated or more potent, we're seeing a, a lighter version of the color yellow. But then if we want to increase some of the detail in there, we just drop some of the luminance. So you can actually control the amount of detail in a color by increasing the saturation and dropping that lightness. If we increase the lightness, we're just adding more white to that area. So again, that before and after. Really cool looking stuff here with what we can do in the individual areas of the individual colors of our black and white photo when we put that hue saturation adjustment layer underneath. So greens. The green, there's not a whole lot of green in this image, but I want those to be pure black. So I'm just going to increase the, uh, decrease the saturation all the way down, increase the hue all the way up, and increase that lightness, make that all the way black. Basically, the way hue works is uh, you're rotating that color around the color wheel. So uh, if it was red, as you rotate it 180 degrees around, it's going to go to cyan, and 180 degrees the opposite way, it's going to still go back to cyan. You're just replacing that color with other color. Saturation, you're bumping up how much of that color you have. So 50% gray is the baseline, or negative 100, and you bring that all the way up to plus 100, that's going from basically 50% gray of that color or no pigment in that color to as, as much pigment as possible. And then lightness is basically your luminance, how much white or black you have in that color. So the more white you add to it, the lighter that color is going to get. The more black you add to it, the darker that color is going to get. That's pretty much how that works. 
So we go into cyan here, we can see that cyan is pretty much what's up in the sky there. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll increase the satur saturation all the way on a color just to see where that color is in the image as I make my adjustments. So if I increase that all the way, I can see exactly what's happening. Now, you see how we get this kind of like, uh, what we're what we're seeing here with this these kind of splotchy areas are actually clipping within a color. So we don't want to we don't want to increase the saturation so much that it starts to clip. And you can even see a haze of it right here. We don't want to increase it that much. And then if we just drop that lightness a little bit, we can add some of that detail to that cyan area. And then let's go into our blues. And then in the color blue, if we increase that hue, maybe increase the saturation and the lightness. Okay, so what you're seeing here is if I take this hue saturation layer off, that's our gradient map black and white. Now we've added some more depth to that. Now let's take this gradient map off and see what we actually did to our photo. This is what we did. So all of our colors are really weird right now. They don't look good at all. But it's not about the color at this point. It's just about the luminance values and what those colors are bringing to that black and white photo for that black and white conversion. So there are many ways you can do black and white conversions, and this is a good one. Now, let's just do something real quick. I want to show you something in the black and white uh, adjustment layer. So in that black and white adjustment layer, you also have something called tint up here. And you can actually tint your photo to whatever color you want while you're working on your black and white photo. This can be really powerful to get a nice sepia tone image in, in these, these darker areas here. This is a kind of a dark brown sepia tone. And then you can adjust your image accordingly to get that sepia tone color. Now, you can do the same thing here. What you'll do is you'll just add another gradient map above it. And then in that gradient map, we'll just change that to uh, something like this one will work for a nice sepia tone. And then we just change that to soft light and then drop the opacity down to about 50%. You can even change this to normal and just drop that opacity down as you see fit for the color that you want. So you get even more control over these areas by adjusting the blending options and the opacity together. So this is a better way to get black and white. So what we covered here, we covered the black and white adjustment layer. We covered that black and white adjustment layer and showed how powerful that can be. But then we also showed how powerful it can be if you make a gradient map and adjust the hue saturation of your colors in your color photograph while you're converting to black and white. So a lot of times we think black and white, black and white, black and white, just the color is black and white. But what we need to really be thinking about is the color because a black and white image is not necessarily black and white. It's the uh, absence of color or the representation of color over black and white tones. So you're, if you think about it as manipulating tone with color, you can get some really awesome looking and very high potential black and white photographs. I'm Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider. And if you have, if you like this, please go ahead and share it. Uh, leave a comment. If you have another way that you do black and white conversions, please put them in there. We'd love to hear them. All right, thank you very much.